Hi, Andrew here. Today we're going to test some 223 110 grain subsonic ammo. Obviously, 110 grains is ridiculously heavy for 223 caliber. Um, 55 or 62 grain is considered generally the standard bullet weight in 223 or 556. 75, 77 grain is considered a heavy open tip match. So 110 grains is way at the upper end of what's even possible in 223. And it's billed as being subsonic. Um, I could shoot it out of my 10 and a half inch like I do for most tests. However, I wanna make sure that this is still subsonic even when it's fired from a 16 inch barrel. So that's what we're gonna test it from. And of course, we're gonna shoot it into calibrated 10% ballistic gelatin. Let's get out to the range and take a look. Okay, it did the thing. <laughs> it did poke a hole. Uh, what are we expecting from this though? Are, are we expecting um, really good terminal performance from a subsonic 22 bullet? Uh, not really, <laughs> you know? Um, you shouldn't really expect much more than a 22 long rifle for that matter, of course. It's a heavier bullet, which means it's a longer bullet. And it does mean that we get to have this nifty little area here where it was traveling sideways as it flipped around. Looks like it might have even done that twice. Looks like it stopped point forward. Total penetration, 19.5 inches. There is, of course, no disruption in the bullet whatsoever and you wouldn't expect to see that that is a really long bullet for a 223 let's see if i can get this thing to focus on it it's it's hard to think of a reason that this exists but it is pretty neat let's get a closer look at the gel so again, it's probably fairly difficult for you to see. Maybe I'll go around the other side, but right about here is where it flipped around. It's hard to measure a proper neck, but because there's a real gradual taper, but I'd say the first point that we start to see disruption is about three inches. Looks like you can see it just a little bit better when it's backlit. Now we're on the other side, entrance is here, came through into this backup block over here. And we see a little bit of disruption in the gel here. This is actually not part of it, this curve that you see here. That's just a little bubble that was left when the gel was cooling. All right, so first off, yes, it is indeed subsonic even out of a 16 inch barrel. However, I was not able to get it to cycle the action reliably. I had to hand cycle the action each time, but that's not uncommon in 300 subsonic either. Contrary to popular belief, Switching between full power and subsonic ammo in 300 AAC doesn't always just mean a magazine change. Some rifles won't run subsonic without some tuning. And this may be the case for this ammunition as well. And a lot of people have criticized 223 subsonic ammunition as being just the same as 22 long rifle. And of course, that's not true. Um, a 110 grain bullet is more than twice as long as a 40 grain 22 long rifle. That means that as it yaws and travels through the tissue sideways, it's cutting a wider path, which means that at least theoretically, subsonic 223 is terminally more effective than 22 long rifle. Does that mean it's a better choice for anything than 22 long rifle or for or any other caliber for that matter? Well, I don't know. I think that this ammunition has just as much practical application as 300 AAC subsonic. In other words, next to nothing for regular folks. Yes, both would be useful for discreet pest control without pissing off your neighbors. And yes, 
Both would be useful for disabling cameras or lights or greasing dogs if you're a Marine Recon Delta SEAL Ninja. But you're not, or at least I'm not. And if those aren't the cases, then in terms of normal guy self-defense or normal guy hunting or whatever, for the most part, it doesn't matter. Um, lots of folks have said, well, I like my 300 blackout for hunting pigs quietly. Well, hang on just a second. Even if 300 blackout subsonic from an AR was completely silent, which is not, there's still the fact that a bullet smacking meat makes a lot of noise, not to mention the fact that animals being shot to death tend to make a lot of noise. Same thing goes for this subsonic 223. Again, bullet smacking meat, animals being shot to death. No, it's not practical. One thing that this would be good for would be for comfortably shooting steel at close range if you can get it cycling in your rifle. And of course, it'd probably be good for small game as well, um, just because it's, you know what? It's comfortable to shoot suppressed. But then we're back to 22 long rifle, and if you have a 22 can and a 22 rifle, then that's probably a better choice for hunting small game anyway. I'm sure a lot of you out there are gonna disagree with me on this one. Um, a lot of what I've said in this video has been opinion. Uh, so, of course, you are free to disagree with me, even when you're wrong, and I love to hear how you're wrong about disagreeing with me. <laughs> if you have any questions or if you do disagree, leave a comment below. If you want to find out how you can rent a high-speed camera like the Phantom that I used for this video, get in touch with Aimed Research and they will get you set up. Their contact information is in the description. Have a great day.